For Klima Media's quality, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is the Western Cape Minister of Police Oversight and Community Safety, Regan Allen, to discuss his strategy to fight crime in the Western Cape. So first of all, uh, congratulations on your appointment. This is a very important portfolio to occupy. What will be your strategy to make the Western Cape a safer place? Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Lamina. I think on the one hand, I am aware of the enormity of the task. I think when the Premier approached me, I felt deeply humbled because the work I've done in the standing committee as the chairperson in the provincial parliament for community safety paved the way in terms of this appointment. But even in that context, I'm so aware that crime and violence that is perpetuated within our communities are leaving our communities in pain. They are deeply fearful. I grew up in an area called Mitchell's Plain in Cape Town. And in Mitchell's Plain, we are not unfamiliar with gangsterism. We are not unfamiliar with drug abuse. Hence, I am so determined to see what we can do in terms of our objectives. So I, so I have outlined a plan, especially for the first 100 days, because what I essentially need to do is I need to make sure that the safety plan in the Western Cape is felt on the ground. And the safety plan has a two pronged approach. On the one hand, we have an agreement with the city of Cape Town where we are able to put extra boots on the ground. We currently have 1,200 LEAP officers. LEAP stands for Law Enforcement Advancement Plan. So that is even outside of our mandate because we've seen an under-resourcing in the South African Police Service. Ms. Lamini, we also have 10% of our SAPS members on the vacancy rate. So we know there's chronic under-resourcing, hence we have deployed additional law enforcement to areas where it is most needed. And we do that based on data and on evidence. Because we've seen if we are able to track where murders are happening, where domestic violence is happening, where abuse and assault is happening, we are able to strategically deploy LEAP officers together with the South African Police Service as the lead agency to where it is most needed. But then also in terms of our coordination, in terms of working alongside the Department of Health, in terms of violence prevention, and looking at the root causes of crime. Because the root causes of crime speaks to our poverty in various communities. It speaks to education in various communities. It speaks to cultural affairs and sport and what that department is doing in terms of programs to safeguard young people from not being on the road, where there's after school programs, where there is cultural programs, where there is learning opportunities and even finance, what economic opportunities are doing in terms of creating not only opportunities, but where young people are able to access those opportunities in order to further their life. Mr. Lamini, it's so easy for many of our young people to join a gang because the environment that has been created over a number of years when gangsters have cemented themselves in communities. So we see that and that is what we need to address. So the Western Cape Safety Plan has seen some successes. Nyanga is no longer the murder capital of South Africa because we have, in conjunction with the neighborhood watches, CPFs and the South African Police Service, additional LEAP officers in Nyanga, and they had a percentage drop of almost 14% in the murder rate. So they're no longer the murder capital. But even if I say that, I realize one murder is one murder to many. But also then on the other side, the Premier during his SOPA address, during his State of the Province address in February, announced that the department will now be known as the Police Oversight and Community Safety. Because we are extending our oversight role in terms of policing oversight here in the Western Cape.
we do know we have capable, dedicated men and women in blue in the South African police service that is doing a sterling job in difficult circumstances. But we also do know that there is some issues. And those issues have been raised by the department and we engage the South African Police Service based on our recommendations and on our suggestions. But it's very difficult, Ms. Lamini, because we don't control SAPS. SAPS is managed by the national government. But we have fostered relationships here with the South African Police Service to bolster the work that SAPS do together with local government, together with the provincial government and safety stakeholders. I'm happy to announce that we ultimately have 16,000 neighborhood watch members, which means that there's men and women that is on the ground as the eyes and ears, and they are helping. They are volunteers, and we are providing assistance. We are providing financial support. We accredit neighborhood watches, and it's a space that we are able to, to work in, but also we are looking at increasing the amount of neighborhood watch members that we have but also keeping SAPS accountable. I think it will be an injustice if we don't hold SAPS accountable because that's in our mandate, that's in the constitution. So it is very broad, but one thing I realized since sitting here is that I can't do it alone. And I would be naive to think that we can do it alone. We need national government, we need provincial government, we need local government and all safety stakeholders to work together. And for this first month in office, I am deeply optimistic because I've seen people are wanting to work together. But Ms. Labini, I'm also very concerned. I'm concerned that there's been flare up in gang violence. I'm concerned that an area like Kailicha has experienced three mass shootings in this year already. It's a matter that we are addressing with the South African Police Service because on the one hand, if, if SAPs are not arresting perpetrators and getting convictions, then there's no deterrent to crime. Whenever any criminal think or believe that crime pays or that it's okay to commit crimes and he won't be caught, then it's not good for our society. So we want to see convictions so that it can be a deterrent to crime and send a strong message to other would-be criminals. But also I'm looking forward to, to working with all stakeholders. One of the entities that is under the department here is called the Western Cape Liquor Authority. And the Western Cape Liquor Authority does a whole lot of work in terms of regulating the liquor outlets in the Western Cape, because sadly, alcohol has been linked to a whole lot of domestic violence and assault cases. And then that places a burden on the health sector, because now health is needing to put more money towards trauma cases. But another sad reality is that we have 1,557 known drug houses which which boggles my mind that in the western cape there's what we call a no drug house where illicit drugs are being sold and that is more than the public schools that we have and in some of these places more than three generations has bought drugs at the same house so the grandfather the father and now the son is addicted and a slave to drugs and they've bought it. So we are working with the police ombudsman, which is also a one of a kind office that's only been set up in the Western Cape, where we monitor police service because we want to ultimately strengthen the hand of the South African police service. We want to shut down drug houses because it's linked directly to organized crime. Sadly, sometimes politics gets in the way of working together. And I do know that it's difficult to take politics out of it, but there's a bigger problem. There's a bigger issue at hand. And it's only once we are able to work together that we are able to see meaningful change.
we have a long way to go, but mm. I'm feeling very optimistic. Talking about politics, uh, sometimes standing in the way, how has it been trying to invite other parties to help in fighting crime in the Western Cape? Mm. It's been very encouraging. In the past, there may have been little communication between political parties. Mm -hmm. There may have been little joint cooperation between political parties. That in the past, there may have been a narrative that we are fighting. But the real fight is against gangsterism. The real fight is against crime. The real fight is against unemployment and poverty which is ravaging our communities. You also come from a place that is known uh, for crime itself. And now you are working with the communities, uh, trying to revive what we know uh, as the neighborhood watches, which are helping communities to work closely with the local police. Can you briefly just share how this intervention has been? Um, I must tell you this story firstly. So I was standing on a corner in Mitchell's Plain. I was 15. And there was a neighborhood watch member that used his own petrol, his time in order to patrol in a particular area in Mitchell's Plain. And Mr. Peter Roman, he, he sadly passed away two years ago, but he was known as a crime fighter in Mitchell's Plain. But on that one particular evening on a Friday, I was standing on a corner with friends and Mr. Peter Roman, together with the South African Police Service, was patrolling. And then they told me, you need to go home. You boys mustn't stand on the corner. Go home. I went home. An hour later, on that very corner, there was blood on that corner. And I thought it could have been me. My story could have been so different. But I realized my story is not unique. It happens. And I've seen since that time the role that Neighborhood Watch members play. So we currently have 16,000 Neighborhood Watch members and they make up over 450 Neighborhood Watches that is accredited in the Western Cape. So we work, we give them startup funding per year. We give them bibs and the necessary basic resources. Together with the city of Cape Town, we also do training, equipping them in terms of first aid, uh, first responder training to see how we can equip these men and women that are volunteering their time. I made a commitment that I want to, in the first 100 days, I want to join 30 neighborhood watch patrols. In the first month, we did a number that already comprised of 17 neighborhood watches. So my wife, is very understanding. She's very accommodating because I'm being out often and I'm engaging, but because I see the benefit. I see the benefit that they play. And just in the week, we were out and it was raining and we were patrolling. We were doing some vehicle patrols, but also mm -hmm. some walking patrols in some of the areas. And mm -hmm. then it was half past nine and I saw a young boy outside and when you talk to them, why are you still outside? Uh, why aren't you going home? You can hear it's, it's normal to be out on the road when it's dark. When I grew up, as soon as the lights go on, the light pole go on, you need to get home. So life has changed. Minister, as much as we know that uh, your province is dealing with a lot of gang related issues, we know that you also uh, are dealing with the issue of taxi violence. Can you tell us how uh, this system of reintroducing the anonymous reporting of illegal firearms will help you to fight crime in the Western Cape? Mr. Lamini, I saw a video where in Menenberg there was gangsters running around with automatic rifles on the streets, automatic rifles. So what I've done was that we reintroduced the reward system. It's an anonymous line and that is fully confidential because I understand that once any community member gives a tip off on where the guns are, 
their life could even be a danger. So I've put everything, all the safeguards in place to ensure that that process is confidential. But if someone provides us with that information and it leads to the arrest and the conviction of a person and we get the guns and we take it off our streets that are often killing innocent people, there will be a reward. But then someone in Aidafel told me, we don't even need the reward. Just help us, show us how to do it, where to do it, and we will do it. Because the illegal gun trade cannot be accepted. It cannot be tolerated because gun violence is giving our gangsters a sense that they are even more powerful. So we are doing that in that regard, but we are making sure that we, ha we are working with SAPS, even with the anti-gang unit that is strategic and uh, we are coordinating the activities of the anti-gang unit, also of the extortion rings that are happening, but also in terms of taxi violence that is happening. So we have a provincial minister for mobility that is meeting with Kata, with Kodeta, with the taxi associations in understanding that the flare-ups that happen there should also be controlled. And I find courage because it is different departments no longer working in silos, no, work, no longer working alone, but having that collaborative approach. So I'm excited about the space. I know a whole lot is happening and it's a very difficult time. And what would you like to say now to those who are accusing your government in the Western Cape of sometimes neglecting black communities when it comes to fighting crime? A black area like Alicia. I used to work school days. I used to work school days and I used to travel to Kailicha from Mitchell's Plain. And it was during a time when it was safe and I could go there. That's not the case anymore. Since my appointment, I've been to Kailicha. I've made a commitment to work in all areas. I'm wanting to foster those relationships, even restore some of those relationships. And Mr. Lamini, I'm going to make sure that there's a level of fairness, there's a level of openness, and there's a level of clear communication between stakeholders and what we are doing in communities. So from my side, I'm going to be clear. We are going to work. We're going to work together. And then after this two years, and once we go to an election, I hope, I sincerely hope that no one will be able to say that against me. No one will be able to say that against a colleague that I have, because we are going to push hard, because the need is hard. And I'm it gives me encouragement. I'm even going to invite you that wherever you are, if you are in the Western Cape, to join the Neighborhood Watch, come with me so that we can see how we are working together. And lastly, as we wrap up this interview, what message do you have now for the criminals? They're going to have no place to hide. Mm -hmm. The criminals, the gang lords, we are going to make sure that we work with SAPs so that they are arrested, that they are convicted. We want to make the life of criminals so difficult because they have made the lives of communities difficult. So we are going to push hard. We're going to make their, their life uncomfortable, difficult, and we are going to pursue them with the South African Police Service so that they can be held accountable. So their time is up. Their time is a long time up, Ms. Lamini. That was Western Cape Minister of Police Oversight and Community Safety, Rick and Allen, in conversation with Polity about the issue of fighting crime in the province.